You need to get data that will help you characterize the context as a place. Okay. Okay. So you need to know how does this how is this classroom different from this classroom? Okay. Um, and you also need to, need to try to get data that um, are going to show you uh, how your intervention uh, gets enacted differently. Okay. Okay. Now, th I mean, but again, this see, the, from my perspective, this is where things get tricky because you can't collect all the data you might possibly need. You know, I mean, there's a there's kind of a folk uh, a folk practice, I guess, in design-based research where people just think, well, I'm just going to go in and collect and just get as much as I possibly can, and I'll figure out what to do with it later. Um, and I've done that. I suspect that everybody has done that. But that's not, that's not really a great way to go about doing research. Okay? Um, and uh, you don't want to collect the, the data that you don't, f for reasons that you can't articulate. You want, you want to have some idea why you might be getting that research, uh, why you're getting that data, sorry. So, you know, I think in each kind of intervention, the kind of data that's going to matter is going to vary. Well, I, that's a good question. I think that what makes design-based research design-based research are the kinds of questions that we ask. Okay. okay. I, and, 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 and the kinds of questions that we ask lead us to do particular kinds of research that can answer those questions. All right. Okay. So, the you know so as as you know as 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 I've as you know as I've written about in this design-based research collective I've written about, we've argued that design-based research is characterized by uh, by two intertwined sort of concurrent goals. Okay. One is to use designs to create. Con novel context to study learning. Okay, so it, if I want to study scientific organization, I have to make it happen because it okay. doesn't normally happen in schools. So, so the design of learning environments to support scientific organization are a way to actually make the learning phenomenon that I want to study actually happen. Okay, but the reason I want to study that those processes of how it happens is because. Uh, I have a sense that it, that it ought to happen better or it ought to happen more often. So I'm trying to, so at the same time that I'm trying to create a context to study some learning phenomenon of interest, I also am trying to, to design more effective educational experiences. Okay. So I think that that's a, 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 a signal characteristic of design-based research that separates it from either uh, sort of straight cognitive science kinds of work, which are, are focused on the former kinds of questions. What are people's understanding of that? And it's different from the more typical formative research of, of uh, traditional instructional design, because those that field historically has just asked, well, does X work? Okay, and 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 so because we have these sort of dual questions that we want to answer. Uh, the question of whether or not something works is not a good question. The, the, the question is really how does it work? Okay? So I do think that, that that I do think there are forms of data collection that are probably uh, if I don't think they're unique to design based research, but they're probably more common. So uh, uh, you have to collect, for example, uh, data both on outcomes that you're trying to observe, as well as uh, the processes that you believe lead to those outcomes. Okay, So if you're going to collect data on process, um, I mean, I think typically, I think if you look at most design research uh, that folks have done, we tend to use what you might call anthropological methods to, to get at issues of process, right? So we, we do a lot of detailed observation either by scribbling notes on a piece of paper or videotaping. But we do borrow that, that notion of close observation of the setting. Okay? So I think that, um, uh, so I think I would say that in, at least in the, 
early trajectories of the design research program, uh, that kind of close observation is, is uh, really an almost mandatory part of the, of, the, of the research process because you can't understand uh, processes without really observing them and documenting them. But it's also true that as, uh, and, and I also think that, you know, we used to talk about design experiments as if a thing was a design experiment, right? Like a study was a design experiment. But in fact, the way that, that, that design experimentation and now design-based research is characterized always involves a cycle of studies, okay? It always involves this notion of what Paul Cobb calls retrospective analysis of the thing you did in order to not, uh, both refine your design and also refine your next step in the research process. So one of the things that I think that we don't do very well yet as, a, uh, as an area, uh, I don't know if we're a field yet, but as an area, as a way of doing research, I don't think we do that great a job of conceptualizing the trajectories that a particular research program might follow. Okay. okay. So in terms of thinking about, well, what, you know, so here I am at the start of a cycle. What might that, what, where might I be two cycles from now or three cycles from now? Like, can I, can, does it do me any good to think about, um, to try to, again, to sort of speculatively map out what the trajectory might look like, even knowing it's probably going to change based on things that I find out early on? That, that the methods you would use to document the things that you care about are going to change through this trajectory. Okay? You can't do, as I just was saying, you can't do ethnographic kinds of observations in lots of places at the same time. It's just not feasible. Okay, so um, so you know you have to think about well, what can I learn from doing, say, very close observations in a small number of settings uh, that would help me characterize, that would help me develop a, a, some other kind of observation protocol to characterize settings, right? And then maybe that's something that I could use if I, once I go to a lot of different places. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, and and I guess to come back to one of your earlier questions, that uh, I guess I believe that if we're interested in uh, generalizations, okay, then what we're the kind of generalizations that I think design-based research can get us to are. Characterizing kinds of context, or characterizing the ways, the, the kinds of variation between contexts that might matter for a particular kind of learning, okay, or a particular kind of intervention, or instructional. 